Mr. President, I just returned from the memorial service for Capitol Police Officer Brian Sicknick. It was held in the rotunda of the United States Capitol, a place which is reserved on such occasions for those who have brought special honor to the United States. It was appropriate that Brian Sicknick receive that honor. On January 6th, Capitol Police Officer Brian Sicknick reported for duty and never returned home. A simple red wooden box contained his remains at the service. Tributes were given to him, all deserved, because this man gave his life to protect our nation, to protect me. It was protection from an enemy, not a foreign enemy, but as we say in our oath, a domestic enemy. American born and bred terrorist who streamed into this Capitol building on January the 6th at the instigation of President Donald Trump. He had summoned them to Washington on that day because the Constitution required it, that the Congress meet that day, that we count the electoral votes and announce to America who would be the next president officially. We knew the results state by state. They had been verified over and over again, challenged and verified again. But this was the formal ceremony, which involved calling the states and their vote counts in the House, and if there were objections, considering them, the, the objections in both the House and the Senate. That was the process that President Donald Trump set out to disrupt. So he called a rally of his loyal followers. They met on the ellipsis. He fired up the crowd and sent them to the Capitol building to stop the count. As they said in their warped logic, stop the steal. They weren't permitted to enter the building, and so they broke it down, the doors, the windows. We've seen the videos over and over. They assaulted every law enforcement officer who stood in their way. Brian Sicknick, of course, lost his life. But there were 140 other police officers who were beaten and maimed and stabbed who still suffer from those injuries today. The same terrorist mob that took Brian Sicknick's life stormed past everyone who stood in their path. What a day in the history of the United States of America. Their occupation of the Capitol included their occupation of this chamber. They marched into this chamber, opening desks, taking photographs of documents, posing for pictures in the president's chair. They had a jolly time showing off to their friends that they could take over the United States Senate. Next week, we begin the impeachment trial. The House of Representatives has accused this president of instigating an insurrection. When you think of it, could there be anything more serious than provoking a group for the violent overthrow of a legitimate government process? Some say we shouldn't do this impeachment. They argue that any speech given by the president to this mob was protected by the First Amendment. Well, if the First Amendment was designed to protect activities to overthrow our government, then it was a recipe for a democracy that would die of its own accord. I think we know better. The Founding Fathers 
expressly included the impeachment clause in the Constitution for a president who would be so bold as to challenge the very existence of our democracy and the peaceful transition of power. After the ceremony in the rotunda, I went to the Rayburn Room in the House and met with Officer Sicknick's family. We stood and talked for a few minutes. In respect to them, I will not repeat our conversation, but I'm going to remember it, and I'm going to remember them. And though I didn't meet him personally, I will remember him next week when this impeachment trial is underway. And for anyone who makes the argument that when it comes to January 6th, it's time for America to get over it, I'm a remember one Capitol Police officer who gave his life to protect me and this Capitol. I'm also going to remember his family, the loss that they've endured because of a political exercise based on a big lie propagated by the former President of the United States.